We bring you greetings tonight as members of the steering committee for the Women in Leadership Project and want to share with you tonight our reflections on Proverbs 31. For a long time, I read Proverbs 31 as a poem about an overworked housewife, an ode to a life I could not imagine nor desire for myself or others. Just reading the final chapter of this rough collection of wisdom sayings made me exhausted. But as so often is the case, everything in scripture depends on context. Proverbs 31 emerges from a terrible period of history for the Israelites. After God's people were exiled to Persia, all the able-bodied men were conscripted into the Persian army or into agricultural labor. The women, the women, were left to fend for themselves, to recreate society on their own. And they did. Women did what women have always done. They lived. They survived. The Israelite women who were exiled to Persia persisted in their resistance to social upheaval. As the sole breadwinners, these women ran businesses and protected family reputations. They supervised and expanded their markets. These women sustained the networks of the vulnerable, and they did it by themselves. The Persian economics of forced labor and coercive power meant to grind down the Israelites, to create a docile and broken people. But, but God has always given Eshetchayel, women of strength, to God's people. God has always given God's people women who speak wisdom and teach loving kindness, who stand together guarding against despair and annihilation. We are here today because of the Israelite women, because their way, their way of making a way when there was no way we are here today because the Israelite women, because of the strength and guidance they gave to a bereft people. And we are here today because of women of strength in the Mennonite church who followed them. We are here today because of Emma Richards and Maria Rivera Snyder, because of Mary Oyer and Seferina de Leon, because of Juanita and Rowan Lark, and Theda Good, and Rose Covington, and Gracie Torres. We are here today because of the women who came before us. As we hear today a different translation of Proverbs 31, we remember all of those women, the women in our lives who led away, who pastored and taught and led and served when there was no way. A precious gem a priceless stone. These are women of strength. We are here today because of you, because of them. Proverbs 31, a woman of strength. When you find one, she is like a precious ruby. When her spouse is forced to fight in the army, when she's all alone to work and take care of her family, her spouse knows that she'll be all right. She makes good things happen, even when there doesn't seem to be enough. She creates with her hands and starts her own business, trading for what she needs. She gets up early to work. She makes sure everyone is fed and that the people who work for her know just what to do. She decides about possibilities for business expansion. If she wants to plant fruit trees, she does it herself. She cinches strength around her like a belt and makes her arms strong. She can tell what people want to buy because she understands the world she lives in and what people need. She's always paying attention. She's aware that others need help because times are hard, and she reaches out to give to those who are hungry. She has more than enough, and she takes care of her family. Her clothes are strength and dignity. She thinks about the future 
and laughs, even though times are so hard. She speaks wisdom and teaches loving kindness, bearing the covenant of God in her lips. She knows what needs to be done in this time when a foreign army has taken her from her country. Her family can see that it makes her happy that she's figured out what to do. She shows everyone that God's people will survive and thrive no matter what. It's one thing to have it easy, to get by with life handing you everything you need. But women like this, women who keep going with God's promises, women who find a way even when the path ends in despair, these are the women you want to be like. 